I'm Jacob Owens, director, editor, cinematographer, YouTuber, entrepreneur, all of the above uh, of Buff Nerds Media. I'm Corey Auer, I'm a filmmaker, DP, and director out here in Phoenix, Arizona. I love uh, working with like-minded creatives and individuals, and I'm sitting right across from the Buff Nerd himself, <laughs> Jacob Owens. Yeah, man, super excited to be here in my house talking to you. Absolutely, man. Uh, it's been exciting to see your journey. We're both from Arizona. Let's, let's, let's ask you a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so a little bit about myself. Born and raised Arizona my entire life. Uh, I've lived here. Went to high school down the street at McClintock High School. Went to college at ASU. After ASU, uh, I was going to film school there. Graduated, moved to LA. Been in LA the last four years. Uh, jumping back between LA and here. Living and working. And uh, I mean, yeah, that's just in, in brief, you know, a little bit of my upbringing and uh, yeah, everything, so. So, like me, you're from here, right. but you've definitely expanded to further horizons. Like you've moved out to LA as well too. Yeah, yeah I mean, basically when I was started doing music videos uh, in college and was doing music videos for local artists, I started to kind of really grow a name uh, online with my YouTube channel and as well as just like a video director and I started getting hit up from other states, primarily Los Angeles. And it got to a point where I was like ditching film class to you know, go shoot these videos. You know, my teachers were upset and I almost dropped out at one point because I was like, my teachers were upset with me and I was like, I'm already doing what I came here to do, which is like make a living making videos and films and, and whatnot. And, uh, but I finished school and basically six months after I graduated, I was like, all right, I'm moving to LA. Like that's just where the industry was for what I wanted to do if I wanted to like take things to the next level. And I was missing out on a lot of cool opportunities too because they'd be like, you know, oh, this artist, you know, we want to talk to you, meet with you. And I'd be like, oh, I'm in Arizona. They're like, oh, let us know when you're in LA. It was just, there were so many things I was missing out on. And so finally just kind of made that jump and moved out, I think in 2013. Yeah. Nice. So tell me a little bit about that transition because everyone's seen the success, but right. what were some of, the, some of the struggles or some of the things you did? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I grew up here my entire life, went to school down the street from my parents' house, went to college down the street from my parents' house. Like I've never lived more than five minutes from home. Even when I lived over in uh, Vista del Sol over at ASU, I had three, four roommates. And so when I moved to LA, it was by myself in a city I've never lived before, you know, away from everything I've, you know, kind of known. And it was really scary. The spot I lived at was a really cool spot, really artistic, like loft spot. But I remember there was one night, probably a week into my move after my parents had helped me move in and they left and I was in LA uh, by myself, like trying to continue this, this filmmaking journey. I remember sitting on my couch upstairs and like, like being, on the verge of crying almost, and I called my mom and I was like, I, I don't know if I made a mistake or not, you know, because it's just, it was something so different than what I was accustomed to. And uh, she was like, it's the right move, you're doing the right thing, like you're following your passion. And, and, and it's not like I wasn't working at the time either, it was just, I've always been a very homebody, even when we were kids, like I didn't like spending the night at kids' houses because I was away from my mom and, and my home, my comfort zone. And so it's just kind of how I've always been. And so the first you know, few months was a little rough, but then I started getting in the rhythm of like being on set of some really big budget videos, editing a T-Pain video, a Flowrider video, being on set of an Akon video. And I was like, no, this is, this is happening. This is right, so yeah. So that's where you wanted to be. And I feel like that's true. Like, you know, the ceiling for opportunity right. and success in LA is just so much higher. Right. And um, honestly, you know, starting locally, even myself, like I filmed a show and this is back in early 2010, 11 mm -hmm. time. And I didn't even know at the time, you know, this artist was going to blow up. It was a Kendrick Lamar show at Club right. Red, just right, right down right. the street yeah. from where we are right yeah. now. And um, it's crazy to see that. But I wanted to ask, like, because you know a little bit about my history. We had spoke right. about this a little bit on the way to right. Montana 300, how you actually started, like your passion, where it actually began. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've, since I was a kid, I had my parents tape like old eight millimeter tape camera, DV tapes, and we would record like little monster movies at home with my brother. I'd film us like with Hot Wheels cars and we'd make like Fast and Furious movies. We'd make our own sports center show, film us having a dunk contest outside. Like I was just always filming everything. And then in high school, um, it was kind of right around the time where you could take like digital tapes and like transfer it to your computer and edit in Windows Movie Maker. And I figured out how to like take that video from the tape and put it on there. And, and I was like, oh wow, like I can like actually edit stuff now because before it was like all on camera, you'd have to like stop, rewind, yeah. and pause. All right, and like get recorded, get recorded and that's how you like did it. 
And uh, it was right at that time, the football team was like, oh, you're like making videos, right? And I was like, yeah, kind of. And I did a video for the football team for the pep rally. No videos had ever been shown before by a student at the pep rally. And this was like the first one. And we did like a football Under Armour kind of commercial, played at the pep rally. And like the rest of the day, like it, everyone erupted afterwards. And the rest of the day, I had like students and teachers coming up to me like, that video was so good. Like, you should make videos. And that was kind of like my moment of like, this is what I want to do. This feels good. And like getting that feedback from everyone. And um, that was kind of my realization of like, all right, I'm gonna go to college for this. This is gonna be my career. And yeah, that was kind of my aha moment for me. Man, that's awesome. That's actually really inspiring to hear. Cause it's just like, you did it naturally. It right. wasn't kind of like nowadays, I feel like it's it's definitely in the spotlight right. and really glorified with the YouTube community. Well, I think like just social media in general now, like everyone wants to be a star. Everyone wants to be famous. And whether you kind of like making videos or not, like there's a lot of people trying to like make videos or films just because they see like other people becoming popular because of it or whatever. And I feel like my, my passion came from a very raw organic place. I just, I grew up doing it and I love to do it. And there was never that like social media aspect of it. And so, but I feel like, yeah, a lot of kids or people nowadays just want to start making videos to either one, make money or two, become famous. Not because they actually like really, really love it. Um, and it may be a combination of both, but yeah, I feel like, you know, it's just something I was, you know, made to do right. the industry is super saturated right, right. now man and right. honestly that's the thing that a lot of people approach me all the time too and they're just like how do i get a good foot in like i'm starting i want to do freelance i want to do all these things right. and now more than ever since it's in the spotlight people are more critical of your work right. there's a lot more you know dilution in the industry there's right. a lot more people trying to reach for that same mm -hmm. that same goal and that same level and how do you feel you know for someone starting out or for someone that's wanting to get to the next level to transition into the next level what do you think are the key factors that really distinguish somebody in today's industry in the filmmaking industry i mean i the the kind of key points i always come back to is one you have to really love it because at the end of the day if, you, if you're not seeing that success that you're like thinking like oh i'm gonna get famous I'm gonna, if you're not seeing that like it's gonna be really hard to continue that and also like get really creative and into what you're doing because you're worried about that element and not just actually creating. And then um, the other part of it is like, um, you really have to, yeah, I don't know. I think it just comes back to me. Like if you really don't love to do it, you're gonna, uh, along the way, you're gonna stumble. Like for example, for me, I'm not a painter, but if I'd like, was it like, if painting was the new massive thing, everyone was becoming famous painting this and that. And I started trying to paint for those reasons. I'm a pretty artistic guy. Like I could probably be decent, but if, like if I wasn't seeing that, it would be, I don't know, it that would be core. hard to really dive yeah. deep into it and like be happy doing it if like I wasn't truly, truly passionate about painting. Right, like that, you have to have that foundation and right. that core. And, and then you have to just work really hard too. Oh, like it doesn't come without working hard. Like I, I have a lot of people message me on like social media, Instagram, Twitter, they'll be like, yo, like been doing videos for a year, haven't really gotten anywhere, like kind of stuck, don't know what to do. I'm like, a year? You've been doing videos a year, like you have, so much like you have so much more ahead of you like that's it doesn't happen overnight and i know that it, a lot of times because of social media it can seem like it happened overnight like i even have a lot of people all post like pictures of my gear and they'll be like it must must be nice to be rich or something like that and it's like when i started making videos i didn't even own a t2i kids are now 14 years old have like five d's and reds at like 18 years old you know and it's like when i made my very first video that i put on my youtube channel i didn't even own a canon t2i that was like the new camera on the market not even an hd camera probably. no no i had like a little tape camera that i was making little videos on and then after that video we put it on youtube and i shot with that t2i i borrowed a friend's like i it wasn't even mine and that's when i was like oh i'm gonna buy this camera and i bought a t2i and that was my first camera and then it was just years of working with independent artists locally and uploading to my youtube channel my name started to grow and then i'd go to california New York and work with artists and just kind of built that name for myself on there then moved to LA then I'm living in LA by myself for two three years building up my name and then starting my production company it's like it didn't happen in a year or two you know it's like there's so much work and uh, my friend will always attest to it. he's always like bro like you're you're still editing you're still doing this or he's like you're the one of the hardest working dudes I know like for sure like you're never not doing something towards your end goal you know what I mean so you just have to not only like be passionate about it, but you have to want to do it every day and work really, really hard. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. I mean, 
Yeah, definitely. I started, you know, professionally around that time. Like I, I started with the T1i, went right. to the T2i. I bought the T2i the next day after the T1i because it had these features that the T1i <laughs> yeah, didn't have. Right, right. And I went to like a liquidation store and I found like a SanDisk Extreme Pro card, yeah. the, a brand new one. And they had no idea how expensive this was back in the day. So I got it for really cheap and yeah. I went there. I sold my TV and took my last paycheck at the job that I had yeah. and I combined those funds and, and I bought a camera. Yeah, yeah. see, and, that's, that's when you know like you want that to happen and pan out. Like the people that aren't truly passionate about it aren't going to do something like that. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, Got to risk um, it for the biscuit, Risk it right? for the biscuit. I always say that. I always <laughs> say that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's cool, man. And honestly, uh, the you know, nowadays, now that it is in the spotlight, there are some cool things about, I think, filmmaking. The right. fact that the barrier, the cost of entry is a lot lower. Right. And there's so many different cameras out. There's different models. There's cinema cameras left and right, right. being released every single year. Like NAB is coming up in a couple of weeks. And, yeah. you know, um, currently, I think the cost of entry is really low. So people think that just because you can get your hands on a camera that can create beautiful imagery, right. I think they kind of forget that you need to have a story to right. accompany right. the yeah. beautiful in, in, imagery. And I wanted to, I wanted to get your, um, your personal opinion on how you felt the market is now comparative to how it was before. Because before you used to do things and have fun and, and right. enjoy it. Now you're doing things and I feel like there's a lot of beauty shots, but there's not a lot of, a whole lot of story. Right, yeah, I think as like things become more affordable in technology, like you're seeing, every single person like pick up a camera because it's so affordable and so you have a lot of people who aren't maybe necessarily like storytellers and so they're trying to create videos and there there's lacking there because you don't have the people who are like truly truly passionate about it that like have that desire to like tell a story and so you have yeah just every single person picking up a camera and i know like right now i'm doing a mentorship program and i have a lot of people who are like trying to do videos as like, uh, you know, try and make it like their full time living, they do other stuff as well. But I can see like, they they picked up a camera because I could like, because it was just so affordable. And I see a lot of like the passion lacking in, in some of some of those people. Um, and it's not like their their end goal. And yeah, I don't know, I think maybe technology um, kind of like you said, it creates that barrier lower to entry. And so you just have, you know, every single person walk trying to buy a camera and walk around and, 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 you know, without real like knowledge of how to, you know, necessarily work a camera. Like I, and I'm very responsive and will help anyone that like reaches out to me. And a lot of times I get sent videos and one of the very first things I notice is the video will be shot and exported in 60 frames a second. And it's, you don't, you know, they don't understand like films and videos like 24 frames a second. Even if you didn't shoot in that, you shot 60 frames a second, you export it out 24 frames a second. Like, and they're just like, oh, like I, I had no idea. And like, but they just are able to get their hands on their cameras without any knowledge of like- Missing the fundamentals. They're missing the fundamentals of filmmaking and knowing the, the, the elements that go into creating an image that's proper, you know what I mean? And it's just because these cameras are affordable and they're buying them and just shooting stuff and then putting it out with, without knowing like, yes, Absolutely. how to actually execute it you know what I mean? right so. no I, I totally agree and, and like the cool thing is like you did say you know you reach out to a lot of people you're really responsive yeah, awesome. and you know being the busy person you are yeah. you know I can I can really see that that's like something that's genuine and unique about you right. and I feel like um, it was funny because I was on a shoot I was doing a huge shoot out in Scottsdale and my buddy's like hey man have you heard of Jacob Owens and I was like yeah I've heard the name for sure I've never like actually talked to this guy right. before and funny enough man literally the next day you sent me a friend request on Facebook and I, I, it popped up on my phone and I'm like, hey, uh, my friend, oh, Pickles. <laughs> my friend was just like, Jacob Owens. And then the next day you pop up on Facebook and I, with a friend request and I was like, is this the guy you were talking about? And he was like, yeah, that's him, dude. And I was like, oh, sweet. So that was kind of like the first time that's that funny. we kind of made right. that connection. And then I was out in LA and um, I uh, hit you up because I saw in your story that right. you were shooting the uh, the yeah. secret no the secrets video. Oh, the secrets video. That's yeah, right. that the first one. Right. and then I, I hit you up and I'm like, hey man, I'm in I'm in the area. I would love to join you on set. Right. And you hit me back up and you're just like, yeah, this is the time and this is the place. Right. And then from then on, it was history, man. Um, right. hopefully uh, I made a good impression on you and that yeah. no, you know that first stride of uh, working together. And I thought it was great, you know. And I think the one thing is I see a lot of one man armies, one man right. bands nowadays. And right. the first impression I had of you on set was you were working with a team right. that was reliable, that had a lot of knowledge, and that trusted your direction. Right. And um, honestly, I feel like 
the strength in your team shows and translates into the strength that you put out into the community. And you know, a lot of people, I, I feel like they fall off because they just try to carry all this weight by themselves. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they don't try to delegate the tasks to other people that could potentially do it better or just help them out. Right. And I mean, that's a that's a huge thing. You know, working with you, I've seen that that's a big thing. And I've, you know, I've always been trying to find a good team myself. Right. And so, yeah, it's important. yeah, like as a director, can you tell me what kind of impressions people that you work with give you that kind of set you off or set you on about working with them in the future? Yeah. So like, I mean, I'm always looking for people that, um, just have a little bit of a pep in their step. Um, and just, you know, when, when we're here to work, we're here to work, but we're also here to have fun. But like, it, it, I always look for that, that vibe and I'm very friendly on set. I'm always going to say hi to people and be like, yo, thank you so much for your help and this and that. But I've been on sets before where it's just like trying to do the absolute bare minimum. And it's kind of like when I ask them to do something, it's just kind of like this. Okay. Like, you know, just, there's a lack of like passion. And so I always look for people who are like passionate and have energy. Like most of the people on my core team are all very like energetic people. Um, and that's what, you know, I always look for in people is kind of that energy people that aren't just like, just very like dull, you know, and especially on set, like when we're shooting, you know, whether it's a music video or commercial, like to have my people, let's go, get it, get it. Like, like I've been that, involved. yeah, that makes people feel good. And especially talent, like when you're directing talent or dealing with talent, like you want to make them feel good and feel like they're in a, a positive space. And when you just have a bunch of, if you have a bunch of people that are just like kind of downers or playing, there's no energy. It's, it's hard to, you know, like create, um, I guess good work or work. It, it could be better. You know what I mean? And so, I always just look for fun, nice, that's the other thing, nice people, just really nice people. Uh, I don't like to work with people that are just like rude, um, you know, so I'm, I, I like to think I'm a nice guy and so nice, energetic, fun people will keep the set lively and fun for everyone involved and it makes the day easier too when, it, when you're having fun and um, yeah, it's kind of what I Absolutely, look for. Absolutely, man, and I remember on that first shoot, it was kind of funny because I actually ran into a lot of people that I work with today still. Really? Yeah, uh, yeah. Corey, yeah. he actually yeah. helped me. Uh, he was second cam on a Globetrotter shoot we yeah. had in LA. Yeah. Uh, I jumped on set with YC. He was doing a music okay. video out in um, Compton, and that was really dope. And then I met Will over yeah. here as well, yeah. and um, now he's like one of your, you know, your go-to guy, your, yeah. your right-hand man. Do you want to let her in? Yeah, we can let her in. Yeah, can you <coughs> let her in? I have, a, I have a thought to say on that. Um, about uh, just the, the crew and everything. Um, mm -hmm. And let me know if you ever have like... Yeah. So my girlfriend, it's funny, she always talks about it. Like she's always, she's been on a couple of my sets and early on she was like, your crew is always so nice. Like they're always nice people. And she's like, I feel like a lot of people in this industry are just like kind of like mean, stuck up and like egos. And she's like, every time I'm on one of your sets, it just seems like everyone's friends and nice and like so like loving to like, oh, do you need something? You know what I mean? And so again, that just goes back to like the type of people I like to be, have on my sets or attract surround to my sets and surround with. myself with of, you know, yeah. You want to pick her up? Get a cool shot of you just Pickles. Like handling her? Pickles. Pickles. Pickles, go to Jacob. Pickies. Come here, Pickies. Come here. Come here. Oh, this is Pickles. This is my new pup. A little Frenchie, the French pickle on Instagram if you want to follow her. <laughs> Super friendly. Oh yeah, she's a lover. Awesome dog. What kind of dog is she? Uh, a French bulldog. Awesome. Frenchie, a little Frenchie. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, no, like I, I definitely agree, man. You, you are who you surround yourself with. Right. And if you surround yourself with people who aren't motivated, right. consistent, efficient, right. and serious when it matters, you know, it's gonna show and it's gonna fall off. It's all the residual effects from having those little inconsistencies in right. the web of, of a team 100%. is going to cause leaks and cracks in the system. Right. Um, I think, you know, speaking on that, you know, Will is definitely one of the people that I see you working with quite often. Right. And um, currently you're working on a show, correct? Right, yeah, we're shooting a TV show out here in Arizona right now, a docu-series on ASU's baseball program, kind of following them through the whole season and uh, brought Will on as the second shooter cam op. And it kind of going back to, yeah, we needed a second shooter. And I was like, one, who's gonna do a good job? But two, who am I gonna wanna be around for, you know, four months? Who's gonna be fun on set? Cause you, you like I said, you want it to be fun. You wanna create that energy and Will's not only a really nice dude, but you know, we're, we're along the same vibe. We're come, both kind of come from an athletic background. You know, we have same interests. He's an energetic dude, nice dude. And so it's kind of like a, a no brainer. You know, I'm not going to bring someone on set who just 
you know, doesn't really vibe with me or is going to bring that energy, you know, especially in such a, a show that can, you know, a docu-series, it, it can be really long days and it kind of can get mundane what you're shooting. It's not like super flashy. So right. to have someone who can just bring that fun energy and, and uh, be fun to be around is super important. Yeah. Right. And I was on that set with you guys. And honestly, it's really cool, man. It's really cool, uh, like watching you guys hustle and work, yeah. but also, you know, you guys had the energy behind it. And I could feel that that's a huge commitment. Right. And how does how does it like pan out for you? Because this is coming off the coattails of the sh the shoot you did at Pauly right. last right. year. Yeah. Like how's that? You know, so much commitment. Does that sort of detract? Because you're 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 reaching out a lot, man. You're expanding right. a ton, not just in the filmmaking aspect of it, but the business aspect. And I right. feel like there's there's artists, there's business people, and then there are the rare few who can balance the both to make right. it really work for them. And how do you feel? How do you find that balance? I, again, I think it just comes down to work ethic and really like time management. Like when I wake up, I get right to work and I kind of, I'm doing stuff all day long and I have people all the time. It's just like, how do you, how do you balance your work life and your personal life? And like, how do you manage to do all the different things you're doing? And it just comes down to one, I just love to do it. it like I enjoy, it kind of goes back to if you love what you do, it's not really work. And in some days it's, it's going to feel like work, but like I enjoy my work because it's fun to me and so i'm just always working on it and um yeah i mean it's not it's not like i have to like find balance i just kind of i just work hard and i'm able to, to balance everything i, I don't really know you naturally know yeah just man. naturally it's, it's easy breed, yeah it's, it's hard to find someone that can balance the business or at least you right. know efficiently do the business side and right. have a workflow and be and stay consistent you right. know it's it's i mean close to 10 years you've been doing it no i mean i mean when i first started like putting music videos on my YouTube channel. And that's not even like professionally. That was like yeah. where I was just first starting to get started. That was uh, late 2010. So it's probably been seven and a half, eight yeah. years around, probably coming up on eight in August. Like, yeah. And, uh, but you know, I always kind of count as like when I moved to LA, that was the start of my journey. Um, because that's when I was like, all right, graduated college. I was always kind of doing it for fun and was making money, making videos, but it wasn't, it wasn't a job at that point, like right. to where it was like full time. I'm, I'm gonna make this my career. So when I moved to LA in 2013, I think is like is the benchmark of what I used to like when I started my career as a filmmaker, you know. And so, yeah, probably been going hard at it for you know five years now. Yeah. Nice. So yeah. Was, I mean, look at this man. We're sitting right. in a gorgeous house that you know yeah. this is the fruits of your labors, right. man. And honestly, um, what was that definitive moment five years ago? Yeah. Where you're just like, I gotta do, I, I want to do this full time. I think I'm capable of it. I, I feel like this is the right move. Was there a, a certain moment, a revelation you had, or was it like a momentum that built up to that? <laughs> um, no, it's just I just always enjoyed it, and I always knew it's what I wanted to do, and I just knew like just baby steps, one foot in front of the other, work on this project, lead to this one, just kept going, and. The harder I worked and the, the more projects I tried to get my hands on and connect with people, the more I grew, the more my business grew and kind of the more successful I became. And it was, there was never really, I mean, the only aha moment I can ever refer back to is when in high school, I was like, oh, I want to make videos for the rest of my life. That was that moment. Um, and it's just from then on, kind of when I first moved to LA, just like, I, I'm not going to do anything else but this. This is what I'm going to do. Like, that's, that's it. If it's not this, then I don't know what. So it was just always, yeah, work hard, make, make this work for me and so what so. what type of like clients do you tend to attract is obviously music videos yeah early on it was like all hip-hop like all rap all hip-hop because that's what i started doing local rap videos and so then i'd put out a rap video and have it and so rappers would hit me up and so i for the first while first few years it was like nothing but rap um and hip-hop and then as my name kind of got a little bigger and I would do, I, I remember I did like kind of a country video and then a pop video for Jesse McCartney, which was like my first big budget video. And that's when I had, actually, it was like six months after I moved to LA and I was still living in that loft by myself. And I got hit up by Jesse McCartney's management. It was going to be his big single comeback through some record label. And I was like, oh snap, this is, it's starting to happen for yeah. me. That was kind of another moment it was like my first big budget label video. Like, and I remember being, ex I couldn't sleep before the shoot. Like Hollywood, E Hollywood was there doing a story on him and filming the whole thing. It was a big budget shoot. It was like Jesse McCartney's comeback record. He was like the Justin Bieber of when I was like a teen or a kid. Yeah. And so it was like a big thing for me and uh, did a really good job. And I remember at the end of the shoot, he came up, he pulled me aside and he came up to me. He's like, how old are you? I was like, I'm 23. And he's like, you're gonna be a star. And I just remember like getting like chills in my body and he's like, 
Like I, he's like, I've been on a lot of sets in my day. And this is one of the best sets I've ever been on. Like not only like fun, but just like smooth. Like he's like, it went so fast. It was efficient. You made it fun. Just, it was just dope. Like, awesome. and like, I just, that was coming from someone who grew up in the industry, still in it. And like to hear him say that to me on my very first shoot with an actual budget, right. like, I just remember that's something that'll always like stick. It's, it gives me goosebumps every time I tell yeah, it just because I just remember like that feeling inside. I was like, yeah. I, dude, I can feel it too, man. That yeah. energy, that, 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 that moment, that's, that's super yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's, that's really something to, you know, to benchmark and to put like a, a point on in your history and your right. timeline. Yeah. And then speaking of your timeline in current day, man, 2018, yeah. Jacob Owens, man, he's on billboards, he's in BH, <laughs> B&H ads, he's yeah. in Anorama ads, he's on, in, in what countries yeah, have you, yeah. what are some cool countries? It was funny, I was, uh, I got a message from someone on Instagram and they were in South Africa and they took a picture of this wall in, the, in their mall in South Africa and it was like a big two, like 20 foot ad of me on like saying something about life and adventure and it was like a picture of me with my camera and they were just like look what i just saw at my mall and i, and I was like where are you from he's like south africa and i was like what wow so i don't know i get weird stuff like that all the time people will like send me pictures of uh yeah like an ad like an adorama or something for some camera gear will be a picture of me on the little thing or whatever right, so right. kind of funny uh seeing all that stuff and just like even just going out i was at the rose bowl flea market little things like this where i'm just walking around by myself just kind of just looking around and i just hear from some off in the distance yo buff nerd like and i was just like what's up man like and he was just like so it's cool little things like that you know it's it's uh it makes it makes it fun yeah, it's it's kind of surreal seeing that yeah. and hearing that. It must be really like it must be really something. Yeah, and I mean, if you would have told me back like when I was in kid or even in high school when I first started making those videos, like one day you're gonna you know direct music videos. Like I was listening you know to Ride and Dirty by Chameleon Air with all my friends. Like if you told me like yeah one day you're gonna direct a video for Chameleon Air, the Bone Thugs and Harmony, Jesse McCartney, like edit videos for T Pain and Flo Rida, like I would have been like you're crazy, like. It just wouldn't. It just wouldn't have registered at all. And it's. I think it's just an testament to if you have a passion, you follow, and you work really hard. Like, you can. You can do it. You know what I mean? Like, I was just an every regular kid. I have no shortcuts into the industry or anything. And it's. You know, I just wanted it and made it happen. You yeah, know for I mean? sure. And honestly, I think if you if you had that knowledge that you were going to be that great one day, I think it would have. You know, for some normal people, for even some right. even great people, it right. would it would change your. Well, route. I think it made me hungry too. Like I feel like if you have this kind of in, or you have something where it's like it's it's kind of being handed so, to you, yeah. you're not as like hungry, and you don't have that drive or work ethic. Like I was doing, like you know, videos for a hundred dollars where I'm getting like police called on us because we're hopping a fence to do this, and like kid, like if if something was being handed, you wouldn't have done things like that. But mm -hmm. all those little things made me who I am, not only as a filmmaker, but a person and just with my work ethic from coming kind of, you know, from, from nothing, not having a name, not having, you know, anything and, and really, you know, I don't know, creating a yeah, drive and yeah. passion for it and yeah. building and going step by step. And it, it creates for a fun story too. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I look back and just like, dang, like I did that stuff. Like that's so crazy. Like, I don't know. And I feel like a lot of people today too, they just expect to skip those steps. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like they just think, I don't need to do videos like that. Or like I had some guy come do a behind the scenes video for me one time. And uh, I told him, uh, cause he hit me up on Instagram. I was like, he was like, oh, I charge, you know, this for behind the scenes. I was like, oh, like misunderstanding. Like people just want experience. Like there's tons of people with me up. Like I just want people to come on and who want to come on and help. He's like, oh, okay, cool. And, and then turns out like he hit me up the day before Come on in, come on in real quick. He hit me up the day before and he's like, oh, see you, see you on set tomorrow. I was like, oh, okay, maybe he changed his mind. And he showed up on set, did BTTS, told me he'd been living in LA, working for like six, seven years. And then at the end of the shoot, we're wrapping up and he's like, yeah, so normally I take like PayPal, like, you know, like, uh, so let me know. And I was like, dude, I already told you that's not what it was. And, mm -hmm. and I was just thinking at the time, I had been working in LA for like three to four years. This guy had been doing it for six and was still trying to do like, you know, not do his own thing. I went through his Instagram. He's like doing behind the only thing he's doing is like behind the scenes videos for other directors. But that was like his passion. He wanted to direct music videos. And I was like, you got to see some correlation there between like that kind of mindset, you know, of like, that was never on my mind early on. And there was time, there's times today where even if the, the project's right, like I'll take a huge cut in my rate, which I, when I shouldn't be, or I'll do something for free or link up with some person without like, just 
there's so many more, you got to look at it as not just like free work, but just like opportunities. The, the opportunities to yeah. network and meet with, meet with people. The first time Will, how I met Will is he asked to come help out on set on the Chameleon Air video I directed. I liked his energy. I liked him. He asked to come back again on a different set. Didn't ask to be paid. Didn't. And it just created this good connection. We ended up connecting, becoming friends. I liked his work ethic. Next thing you know, I'm asking him to DP this video for OT Genesis, asking him to DP this one for that secrets video that you right. were on. And then the TV show comes up. I'm like, who do I want? First person that's going to come to mind, Will. You know what I mean? And that came from him not worrying about like, oh, I need to be paid this. I'm, I'm only going to do these things. Like, I don't need to go help someone else out. Like, you know, so... Early on, I did a lot of stuff, much like what Will did, where it's just, you just gotta... Help out. Yeah, just gotta help out. It all comes down to what motivates people, right. too. If money is what motivates you to pick up your camera and go out there, I feel like you're going out there for a very tunnel-visioned reason, right. and it's gonna follow. All the first music videos I did with Futuristic, uh, KID, who is now Kyle, and had the biggest record of last year, I Spy, with Lil Yachty, and it was everywhere. I met him when he was a 16-year-old kid, making, uh, living on it, uh, sleeping on his mom's couch, he didn't have money to pay me. And I was just like, yo, I'll shoot you four videos. Like I was just, I wanted to do it. I wanted to get my name out there. I wanted to connect with artists and c create music videos and create a reel for myself and do all that stuff. And I shot probably like 20, 15 to 20 of his video, like videos that we put on my YouTube channel before I ever got paid. But when he got signed to a record label, guess who he came for, game, came to for a music video? Me, and guess who I got, got paid by the record label? Me. And then it just, from there, it grabbed more videos, labels, other artists, and it's like, you, and it created also the following I had, the YouTube channel. I was able to then make money off my YouTube channel down the road, but it all started because I wasn't worried about like what we were talking, I just, I was just doing it, you know what I mean? I wasn't worried about the financial aspect of it. I was just doing it because I wanted to do it, I love to do it, and I was trying to get further. Right. And I think that's where it's got to come from if you want to be like truly, truly successful. I mean, you can still be successful the other way, but I think it's much harder of a journey on yourself doing it the other way. If you just look at the number game right, all the time, right, right. I feel the same way. Yeah. I feel the same exact way. And that, you know, what, what really motivates you Na nowadays? Like you got how many I houses? Just, I just like three, I three houses, three houses. The other two I Airbnb out. This one I live in. Um, I'm going to buy a house on Hawaii before I'm 30 for Thank sure. Um, but like what motivates me is just, see, I feel like, what motivates me is I just like to create. I made a video about it called Constant Creation. And it's literally like creation makes me sane. Artists, they, they want to paint because they want to paint. They're not doing, you know, like half of the, what is it? Is it Van Gogh who didn't get famous before he died or right, whatever? It's right. like he didn't do it because of the fame and the money. He just did it because he loved to paint. And I just like to create constantly. I like to work on stuff constantly. I like to stay busy. I like to, I just like to do it. So the only thing that motivates me is like, what project can I do next? What, how, what cool creative thing can I do next? Like, it's not, it's not anything else, but like, I want to grow as, you know, in my talents as a person and just keep, you know, creating stuff. Right. I don't know. That's just yeah. what I like to do. Just to drive yourself towards your goals, success, the money will go. Right. They will follow you wherever right. you go. As long as you put your passion, your heart behind right. it. And I 100%. feel like that's like the fundamental that you're bringing. That's right. kind of like the underlying theme. If I had to pick one thing that would be like the ultimate future goal would be to go to the movie theater with my family and see like directed by Jacob Owens up on the screen. Like that would be, that would be nuts. Yeah, man. So. That'd be pretty sweet yeah, dude. But yeah. I do see that happening. Man. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to put that pressure on you, but I want to put that positive energy <laughs> right, into your right, journey. Right. Man. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, with the right attitude, which you have and the right mindset and the hard work ethic, that's a lot of things that a lot of people lack. And right. you know, your turnarounds are always really quick, man. And I yeah. feel like your efficiency is really great. And let's talk about that. You know, some people will get stuck on a project editing it for quite a while. You know, right. I just shot a passion project myself where I rented a whole town. I had about 30 people in my crew right. and we love it. You right. know, we, everyone had a great time and it looks gorgeous. And, but my, my, my myself, I'm just like, you know what? I want to, I want to finesse this. There's no real timeline, but right. I do want to get it out there. Right. I don't want to lose the momentum. Momentum. Right. How do you find yourself? And in that's your a, that's a good point. Lose the momentum because I I've ex I haven't necessarily experienced that a, a little bit, but I I notice it happening in other people where if you don't do a project right away, other things start to come up and you lose interest in that thing and you keep pushing it off. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. And then as each day passes, you lose more and more interest and it's just getting further and further away. And then you either don't end up getting done or it takes months to get done. And uh, so I've always been a big advocate, especially, I don't do it as much now, but when I, like a couple years ago, as soon as I'd get home from a shoot and it, it could be midnight and I'd 
sit down and just plug away at the edit till 7 a.m. be done and on to the next thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And 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 that's how not only I was able to take on so many projects, but just um, just I don't know. I feel like that allowed me, yeah, to take on more projects to grow fa at a faster rate than maybe a lot of people because I wasn't taking weeks on end or whatever to to do a project and and maybe not getting too in my own head about like oh this needs to be perfect this needs to be perfect just getting it to a place where I was really happy with it and not sitting on it for a week or two like trying to absolutely perfect it yeah. you know what I mean and I feel like that because ultimately even when you try and do that it's still not going to be exactly how you want it you know what I mean so I feel like you kind of have to create those deadlines for yourself to where you're like no matter what I do to this thing it's not going to be in my head as perfect as it needs to be so just power through on the next thing power through on the next thing and yeah, I was, you know, I don't do it as much now, but I used to just like, as soon as I get home, sit down, edit the whole thing, be done the next day, on to the next project. Hey man, I still, next sometimes day. I do that myself yeah, too, yeah. for commercials, for yeah. for any types of videos. Honestly, even for some of the BTS. I yeah, I remember that the BTS you did for the Incredible video. You sent me the link the next day and I was like, this guy gets it. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's, that's, that was me. That's what I did, you know? And uh, it, it keeps clients happy too. It keeps people wanting to come back and work with you, especially if they go and work with someone else and it takes them two weeks to get a project back. Like, I'm gonna go back to Jacob. Like, I, I can't deal with this over here. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I feel like that's another like big key proponent to like my success. Consistency yeah. is key, man. Yeah. Hard work, consistency, yeah. and you have to have that core foundation. Um, you know, one of the one of the biggest things I want to say is that I admire about you a lot is definitely your attitude, man, right. and who you surrounded yourself with all this time. You know, if you worked your way out, you weeded out, you know, the 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 herd, right. so to speak. And honestly, you know, it it shows in your work and your work ethic. And yeah. you know, I can't wait to you know sit in that movie theater one day and see directed by Jacob Owens yeah. as well. And yeah. you know, that's a uh, that's a big thing. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, who is your favorite actor or actress? Do you have one? Favorite actor that you could work with? Will Smith. Oh Just, yeah. Yeah, he's such a legend, OG, and it's I would I would have to say Will Smith Dude. for sure. What's your favorite movie? Inception. Just because I remember walking out of that theater going, "What did I? How? how? What? Right. Like, how did someone think of this? Yes. Write it, put it together where it made sense, and shoot it. I was just like, how? Like, so probably that one like always sticks out to me as just being kind of like. Right, like, mind yeah. blown. Yeah, yeah, in so. recent time, Doctor Strange, I was like, dude, the visual effects right, in this movie are just right. wild. Yeah. And it's, you know, that's, that's pretty intense. But um, favorite director, if you have one? I would have to go probably Christopher Nolan. Christopher uh, Nolan. Just, just because of that. Like, it just, everything typically he puts out, like, I'm just like, it's, it's good. Like, uh, but yeah, M. Night Shyamalan. Like, a lot of people don't like to give him, like, credit, but he's, he's an OG. He's always been one of my favorites from Signs to Sixth Sense. Uh, to even the village, which didn't get a lot of great feel. I've just always been a big fan of him, um, so I'd probably have to say M. Night and uh, and Christopher Nolan. Yeah, that's real dope. Yeah, my, mine would be favorite actor would be Tom Hanks. I would love to work with Tom Hanks, and it also kind of translates into my favorite movie, which is Forrest Gump. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know, like that movie has everything: comedy, action, drama. All well, I, another thing of why I think I like M. Night so much, I think I could relate to him on on one sense. I remember. Um, on the movie Signs, I bought the DVD and it came with like bonus extras and it had a, a clip, like a little section ta of him talking about how he used to make little home monster movies by himself with his camera and he put like a mask on an RC car and was like driving it around and that was like the monster and I just remember thinking like that like inspired me when I was a kid. I took my parents home camera and we made a little monster movie called Exedia and like with my neighborhood kids and my brother and it's like so like, I don't know, I think that was like early on why M. Night like struck so hard with me and, and Signs at the time when I had seen it, like, I was just like, I, I kind of had a fascination with aliens as well. And yeah. so I was just like, yo, this movie's crazy. And, and then I saw that little thing and I was like, yo, he, he's like me, like making a little monster movie. Right? Yeah, and so yeah. I think early on, he was definitely um, why that like struck a chord with me, for Dude, sure. That was the move back then. Yeah. Grab your camera, get right. all your buddies in the neighborhood, right. and just direct films. Right. Go out and do it because you love it. Because right. you weren't getting paid when you were a child. No. Heck no. no, but I was just, all, literally you asked my parents, they're like, yeah, he didn't ever not have a, like, a camera in his hand. Like I'd shoot our hamsters running around Lincoln Log Towns we built and pretend like they were little monsters. You know, like it, right. just every, like we were Jeez. shooting anything and everything, so yeah. Yeah, 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 and you, you know, you've made a name for yourself. You just did a thing with Google. Yeah. Recently. Yeah, went spoke at Google. 
about how to basically kind of take, you know, smaller production teams and, and get the most out of your production without spending and wasting a ton of money, but also like being just fast and efficient and like how, you know, you as a small team or group or individual can just be the most effective, you know, the most effective that you can be. Yeah. So that was fun. That was cool. That was kind of a crazy moment to have Google bring me in and talk to their team. Like that was pretty wild. Big ups, man. That's super dope. Yeah. And yeah, like for now, this is just honestly still the beginning. Yeah. And it's yeah. such a great beginning. And that's what I always say too. It's like, like realistically, if you look how, like how much I've actually been doing it from the time I moved to LA, I was like, it's been five years. In the grand scheme of things, five years is not a lot of time at all. Mm -hmm. And it seems like already, like it seems like such a long journey, but it's like, yeah, it's, it's still just the beginning for sure. And that's how I always try and look at it. Cause if you try and like, you know, kind of, like I said, get into your head where you're like, oh, I've been working so, and I'm only here. It's like, that's where you just start to mess with Compare yourself. Compare yourself so. with other people's yeah, journeys. And, yeah, so I'm always like, I don't follow people on social media, like only my friends and family. Like I always just try and keep it like, I try not to watch other people's videos. I just try and keep it as like, what would I do? And not like pay attention to other people. Cause I, I just want at the end of the day to, to do me. And Focus. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's funny. I've had a lot of people, they'll message me like, oh, you're stuck up, you don't follow people. And it's like, no, it's not that. It's just like, I would love to, but it's like, I don't. You don't want to fill like your feed with stuff that just doesn't relate yeah, to yeah, you or doesn't, yeah. yeah. I'm, just, I'm, I'm focused on me, my family, my friends. And, and yeah, I mean, uh, the, one, the one thing I always tell people, like if they always ask like, what's one piece of advice? And I always kind of just say like, work on something every day, like practice. It's just like filmmaking, pretend it's like anything else. If it's basketball, you're only going to get better if every day you're out shooting hoops, you're dribbling, you're doing drills to enhance your skills and become a better basketball player. Same thing with film. You're not gonna get better sitting on a couch playing Angry Birds or whatever, you know what I mean? So every day work on something, whether it's writing, whether it's shooting, whether it's editing, whether it's research and studying a film, like just practice. I, uh, I pulled up my goal list. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a two year plan kind of yeah. like mapped out. Right. And on the goal list, on the top of it, it's like, purchase an Aerie Alexa. Nice. And he's like, hey man, he's like, honestly, do you need it? And I was like, do I need it? I love, I would love to have one. Yeah, yeah. And um, I've seen the reputation that follows that, right. but that's not why. It's because it's almost like that, right. that validation right. that I've made it that far and that I could purchase that camera and right. it's gonna work for my products. But right. you, you're right. a big, you're a big red advocate right. and and you got to use the right tool for the right job right. and you found that you've been usually using reds right have you right. used any other have you had experiences with other I cameras used Aerie twice and i didn't really wasn't really a fan of the post workflow it seemed a lot choppier um at least on my system and it wasn't as smooth and i was like ah, i'm not gonna shoot airy and I, I feel like camera they're so close anyways uh so yeah it just comes down to just almost like do you, which brand do you like better? You know what I mean? So right, right. yeah, yeah. No, I feel you, man. Like I definitely hear that. And you know, right tool for the right job. And you know, we're shooting this thing on Ursa's right now. Right. And, and the cool thing about, you know, that lower cost of entry, that barrier being let down is Blackmagic just emerged on the market and it's definitely taking it by storm. And the fact that you have so much in one camera right. that's at a small price right. range and right. Red's releasing cameras every day. They're releasing a cell yeah. phone. Yeah. You know, um, that's just intense. Are you going to get that? Are you going to get that red cell I'll, phone? I don't know. We'll see. I need to know more about it before. Like, I've never been one of those guys that just, like, pre-order something or purchase something without, like, seeing it uh, tested uh, and, like, seeing it through put through its paces or seeing someone else have it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not just going to, like, spring for... That's the other thing. I feel like I'm smart with my money. Like, I like to invest in things. I like to not just jump on, like, the latest tech that comes out because yeah. it's, like reputation or this or that like I feel like that's another thing I've just always kind of been smart about what I'd spend my money on and splurge on and so yeah we'll see but I'm definitely a fan of red so if it's anything like they are claiming it's gonna be like I'll probably I'll probably snag it <laughs> man if they release an airy uh, cell phone I'll jump on that <laughs> no but um uh, you know, I think we talked a lot about business and your upbringing. What about, um, aside from filmmaking, what are you passionate about or what do you really love doing? Because I've seen you do a lot of travel videos. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to travel a lot and I think that came from my brother went to school in Hawaii and I went out to visit him and I just kind of got my first experience of like really just mobbing around an island, cliff jumping, like swimming. I've always liked to swim and like, but being in the ocean and then I went there like 
eight more times, like over the time of him being at school there. And, and then from there I went to, you know, it started going to the Exuma Bahamas, Thailand, all these different places and kind of just opened up. I think him going to school there was a blessing for me too, because it opened up a world of like another passion of mine, which is just to like travel and see the world and also use my camera to capture it and document it. And, and so I think that's really fun. And also just fitness. I've always been a big guy uh, in, in the fitness side of things, like an athlete my whole life, basketball, baseball, golf, soccer, f everything, you know? And, right. and that's kind of where the name Buff Nerds came from is because it's like, I was an athlete, but I was like a kind of a film nerdy kid. Like, so I was like, I'm a buff nerd. And, and so like, I'm big into fitness. I have a fitness workout guide that I made for creatives and people that like quick workouts to get you in and out of your, you could do it anywhere. And, and so like, I'm always like, you know, big on trying to help people with that side of things too and, and be involved in that. And it, honestly, if I wasn't doing video production or you know, anything like that, I'd probably be some sort of sports trainer or right. open, try and open my own gym or something like that. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, it started early on. My dad, he would pay us a penny a push up. So we'd get like, I feel like, you know, we got not only into working out early, but it was like a positive reward. It's like, right. oh, you work out, it's like you get a penny. And so yeah. we do like two, 300 push ups a day, get two, three dollars. And as a kid, you're like, yeah, I yeah. got all this money. And like, so I think it's just, you know, that helps, you know, kind of instill um, that positive, also that work ethic into me, but also just that my love for fitness and sports and stuff. So. And kind of help you build your uh, physique that you got build going Build my on. physique, build my brand. Like if I, if I wouldn't have ever done sports or, you know, I just, I, the buff nerds wouldn't exist. It's crazy how all these like things like connect yeah. and lead into each other. And, and then also trying to capitalize off that, you know uh -huh. what I mean? Like, Monetizing I, it. right. I saw the opportunity like, Oh, that's what's unique about me is like, I'm a, a kind of a, a buff nerd and then created the name and pushed that and the content I put out is kind of based around that, you know, and right. it'll be me in Hawaii with a shirt off, ripped, holding a camera, like, and it's like, you know, or standing like, by a waterfall, standing, looking into the right, distance, yeah, yeah so. with this, with this built-in windscreen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, um, yeah, find your niche and kind of run with that, capitalize it, yeah. you know, and, yeah. But that's another thing too. People are always saying like, hey man, just stay in your lane and I don't really like that terminology yeah. a little bit because I feel like your lane can be split into multiple routes and you right. can definitely get residual, right. you know, monetization, capitalize on that. You can definitely get a lot of things that of course have your path, right. you know, right. make it to your goal, but there are so many different ways to get yeah. to the summit. Yeah. 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 And you know, and I feel like you're finding a lot of ways to get to your summit. Right. You're finding ways to capitalize and monetize off of your uniqueness, off right. of your successfulness and off right. of, you know, and then not only are you climbing to the summit, but you're reaching back and helping the next right. guy out. Right. And that's right. huge, man. Right. That's definitely Yeah, like, big. I mean, I've went back, talked to my high school a few times, planning on going back to my college soon. Like, I've always made guides and manuals of how I shoot my videos and responded to people who asked me questions on Instagram. And, and I don't know, I've always, I've always enjoyed doing that. And it's not, when I was coming up, I didn't have anyone to, like, look forward to that. I didn't have, like, a mentor. I didn't have people I could ask questions. And so I just, I, I don't know. I, I'm a, I like to help people, too, and, and you know, give, give guidance where I can. For sure. That's cool, man, because there's a lot of mis, you know, misinformation and right. a lot of uh, um, ambiguity in the industry that right. a lot of people don't touch on. But you definitely shine lights in the, you know, the darker areas. And working in this industry, you're big on the directing part and right. obviously the deeping part. What type of people did you look towards for inspiration, or that you know, fellow people in the circle that you want to work with or you want to collab with? Um, I think like people that would be fun to work. I, I, it's more like artists for me. Like I would, like I have like kind of a dream list of like three different artists I would like love to collaborate with. Not, not necessarily like other directors or, or filmmakers, but like I think it would be incredible to direct a video for Eminem, direct a video for Jack Johnson, and like direct a video for Childish Gambino, or even just be involved on one of their sets. I don't even have to direct it. Just even if I'm like involved with them and could collaborate and some manner you know i think that'd be really cool um i've always you know those have been like three of my biggest influences as far as like music and music i listened to and like when i was a kid all i've bought all you know i've ve bought very few cds in my life but i've bought a cd from each you know a physical copy from each of those artists That's when you know it's real yeah, yeah yeah so um i think as far as collaboration with like an artist that'd be really cool and then if i had to like go filmmaker and go dream top list it'd be probably M Night, just because I've, I've, 
I watch how he interacts on Twitter. I follow him on Twitter and just like Instagram. And he, is he, he weird on Twitter? No, he just seems to kind of be like me in the sense where he shares information about like day 52 on the set of Shooting Glass, like the new movie shooting, ran into some problems with writing. I had to take a break. Like, I don't know, he just kind of dives into- Transparent. Right, he's just transparent. I feel like with social media, a lot of people just aren't that way and they try and throw up this facade. and. I just kind of can relate to him. And like I said, I've always been a fan and I love his movies and everything he does. So I think it'd be cool one day in some capacity to like, I even tweeted him the other day. I was like, I know I'm not gonna respond, but I was just like, yo, one day I want to be on one of your sets. Like just, and I rarely do that. I don't, I follow like, I follow like 40 people on Twitter. You know what I mean? And it's mainly my friends. So it's like, I think that'd be like in some capacity M night, that'd be just wild to even just watch him work. You know what I mean? And, and pick his brain on stuff.